how can you find out what an attacker wants to do on a system with as little risk as possible? Well, with the help of a honeypot for example. This is a security measure used to deceive, identify and monitor potential attackers. Just as bees are attracted to honey, a honeypot is used to attract attackers and monitor their activities in a controlled environment. This can be done by simulating a well-known service such as SSH, which, like the original, listens on port 22 by default, but in reality does not allow any combination of usernames and passwords. No matter what credentials the attacker tries to log in with. The honeypot does not let him through because its only purpose is to slow down the attacker and to record which usernames and passwords he enters. This can reveal whether it's a brute force attack or a targeted attack against specific users in the system without compromising the real system. And that brings us to the properties that a honeypot should have. Honeypots are isolated from critical systems and networks to ensure that a successful attack does not impact the production environment. All activities carried out by an attacker within a honeypot are monitored and locked. This allows to analyze the so-called tactics, techniques and procedures, TTPs for short, that is the attacker's approach. All of this, of course, is for prevention, to detect attacks early and alert security managers to prevent successful attacks on critical systems or the network. There are three different types of honeypots. Low interaction honeypots. This type of honeypot attempts to lure the attacker by mimicking a simple application or service without compromising the real, important systems. They are easy to implement and act as a kind of early warning system to respond quickly to attacks. Due to the low interaction possibilities, they offer only limited insights into the attacker's activities. High interaction honeypots. High interaction honeypots mimic not only the application or a specific service, but sometimes entire operating systems. However, the implementation is much more time and resource intensive than low interaction honeypots, but they offer the attacker a larger playground with numerous rabbit holes that can slow him down and give the honeypot developer deeper insights into the attacker's behavior. Research honeypots. This type of honeypot is primarily used for research purposes to analyze the attacker's behavior and identify new attack techniques. What are the advantages of honeypots? With honeypots it is possible to detect attacks at an early stage and study the attacker's behavior. You may slow down the attacker and buying yourself time to work on appropriate countermeasures. Previously unknown threats can be detected and analyzed by a honeypot. In addition, the data collected can be used to develop training measures or optimize existing ones. But what are the disadvantages of honeypots? Honeypots can pose a danger if configured incorrectly. High interaction honeypots require a great deal of time and resources, which also has a financial impact. The work is not done with the one-time configuration of the honeypot, because it must also be maintained and the collected data needs to be analyzed. Honeypots can sometimes be classified as a threat by other systems, such as an IDS, which in turn can lead to false alarms. If you want to know how to set up a honeypot, please watch my video on Endless SSH. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.